and welcome to my YouTube video. Today I'm going to show you an overpainting of a chimpanzee. Here is a reference photo that we will be using. In last week's video I showed you the underpainting method. This video is available on my YouTube channel Sarah Halliday Art. So have a look if you've not seen part one that accompanies this video. Before we start, I wanted to have a quick word about my palette. The colours that I'm using for this video are Windsor & Newton Cadmium Red, Rembrandt Ultramarine Deep, Windsor & Newton Ivory Black, Windsor & Newton Cadmium Yellow, Rembrandt Yellow Ochre Light, Windsor & Newton Raw Umber, and Windsor & Newton Titanium White. Ultramarine Deep and Yellow Ochre Light are lovely colours in the Rembrandt series. So I suggest switching to this brand next time you run out of that colour. Someone actually recommended them to me and I'm glad they did because I use them all the time. So let's get on with the painting then. This overpainting is done in two sittings. I have allowed the paint to dry between sittings. So I use this first sitting to find my temperature and my colour hues. And once I'm happy with the potential mixes, I move on to layer two. The colour mixes that I use are pretty much the same in layers one and two. So the colours that I've listed on the right hand side, which will just pop up on your screen in a minute, will apply to layers two also. I'll just be applying the paint a bit thicker. I'm using a little bit of paint thinner in this layer but not too much though as you don't want to be taking paint off from your underpainting. So I think I'm happy with my hues and temperatures so now we'll move on to layer two. So we've figured out our values in the underpainting. We've also figured out our hues and temperatures in layer one. Now we need to concentrate on how we are actually going to paint this picture. I want my final painting to be as expressive as possible. So I am concentrating on the brush marks that I'm making. I'm using a variety of brushes to achieve this, including a flat brush, a filbert, a long haired comber, and a small round brush for the areas of detail. I am also varying the thickness of my paint. I don't want every area to be thick, but I want to contrast throughout the painting of thick and thin painted areas. So the rule is generally that you either have your dark areas thick and your light areas thin or vice versa. It doesn't really matter which. However, I think most people choose to have thick light areas because white paint is naturally quite opaque. So it does make sense to do it in this way. However, I do do both in my paintings as I quite like the effect of thick dark paint and thin light paint. So don't feel that you have to do only one or the other. You can play about and experiment and see what works best for you. So if we think back then to the colours that are on our palette, they basically consist of blue, red and yellow. It is a limited palette, but it does give us the advantage of very easily being able to control the temperature shifts by either adding more red or yellow to my mix to make my colours warmer or by adding more blue and black to my mix to make them cooler. It is a very straightforward palette and very good for portrait painting so I would definitely recommend using this palette if you are going to paint portraits. Remember also as you add white you naturally cool down your colour mix so you may need to add more warmth to your mix as you add your white. At this stage of your painting, you really do need enough paint 
on your canvas at this point to allow you to push and pull it about. However, it is very easy to lose control of your painting at this point. So your brush selection is very important. You want to select something like a longer haired coma, which is great for straight alla prima painting as it allows you to add wet paint on top of wet paint. If you find that you are taking paint off, your bristles are too short, so you're probably using something like a flat brush. So change your brush. As I want the focus to be on the chimp's face, mouth and fingers, I have also used my most saturated reds in this area. So for the fingers in the mouth, I have used cadmium red straight from the tube. In order to keep your eyes focused on this part of the painting, I'm also using very soft marks around the arm and head area. I'm not just smudging my paint with my finger, but I'm using my finger to pick up the paint from my palette and apply it to my canvas. So this can get quite messy, so you may want to wear gloves when you do this. You can also use the back of the brush to scratch out areas of your painting. I have done this in various places in the chimp's fur to help give me more of a textured feel. And this is it, the finished painting. I hope that you have enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe to my channel if you are able to and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find details of one-to-one -one classes and online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.